Every week, we have Ryan Doyle on the show. I have no idea why. I think he's bribing someone in a very high place. I mean, God, of course. And now he's brilliant. He's co-host of Friendly Fire on News Talk 1010, which has ratings through the roof, for goodness sake. And then he's a regular on this station. How are you? I'm good, sir. Marvellous. I didn't ask about your moral standing. You mean you're well. I'm well. You're well. You. Oh, yes. and who is the pedant here? <laughs> uh, Jack Layton, I had no idea, had passed away. No, I'm not being flippant. I like Jack. He was a nice fellow. Mm. Didn't agree with him, but I thought he, he was a, a cut above most of left-wing leaders. He would debate and discuss. He came on the show and that sort of thing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry he's gone, but this, this fetish about naming streets and roads after people who were not great statesmen of the world, it's not Kennedy or, or Lincoln or Churchill, you know, Tommy Douglas. Stephen Lewis has things named after him. As far as I know, he's still alive. It's sort of a life anyway. Uh, it, I'm not, I'm not trying to be condemning here, but Jack Layton... It says Jack Layton why. I think it means Jack Layton way. Isn't it too early? Isn't it too premature? Isn't it redundant? Listen, I'll, I'll be condemning if you won't. I mean, you call it a fetish. I call it a sickness. And this idea that we canonize people who basically, uh, what, Jack Layton got some of the gas tax shared with other municipalities, the federal gas tax shared. Uh, he did some things with people who were on the streets, homeless people. For the most part, he did his job as a Toronto city councillor. Yeah. Uh, you know, he did his job as the leader of the NDP by giving that party relevance. Uh, we don't reward people for just doing their job. They get a paycheck for that. Uh, past that, this fawning, the people that were out in the streets on, on the weekend, I think it was on Sunday, where they were just watching this plaque put up like it was raising an angel to the sky. I mean, this is just nonsense uh, that we give this guy this much credit. And again, it's not to take away from his accomplishments, but let's put the accomplishments into perspective. These were part of what he was paid to do as a city councillor, as a, as a member of parliament. These are the things that he was paid to do. We don't need to go above and beyond. He didn't, you know, uh, cure cancer at the end of the day. He didn't, you know, cure HIV at the end of the day. He did his job as a local city councillor, and it has to be recognized as that and that alone. I think figures of historical import people who lived in the far past who have a certain iconic sure. stature. I mean, every town in this country seems to have a, a Simcoe Street, for example. But when you, when you name things, when you commemorate political leaders, by their nature, they're partisan, they're political. Now, we know it'll be left rather than right-wing sure. leaders who are treated thus. And it, does, it just seems banal. And it, it makes Canada seem rather small that we're naming a street after a, a politician who was never a leader of the country, I really did not achieve greatness. I, mean, I, I wouldn't agree with you about just doing their job. I think you can just do your job and maybe be commemorated in some way. Um, but I, I, I just... And the people but out there... for what there, purpose? I mean, at the end of the day, for what purpose? There's a lot of roads to name. Well, sure, there's a lot of roads to name. Name them after, you know, colors in the rainbow and, uh, you know, car companies or what, whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, you're giving these away like they're candy and that they're mm. supposed to mean something to people. At the end of the day, you know, you mentioned Simcoe. There's a, you know, a lot of history there. The, does it not water down his accomplishment to put Jack Layton on the same pedestal as we do Simcoe? I mean, of course it does. At the end of it all, we should have, you know, leaders or, or people who are historic figures put up on that pedestal for a reason, for a very good reason. Uh -huh. And to put them up there with people like Jack Layton waters their names down at the end of it. Well, the mass neurosis of, of, of the collective grief that Jack Layton had died. And once again, if, if anyone thinks I, I'm completely indifferent, no, I'm not. I mean, a man died far too young. Sure. Politics aren't even the issue here. It, it was a great shame. But the idea that he, he was somehow a, a great man and we have to whisper his name and, and, and tears, and it's a very special place. No, no, he, he was a working politician. He was always a politician and um, hardly the son of God, which leads us to Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas sign on city buses to stay put. A Saskatoon man, allegedly a Saskatoon man, is, is uh, filing it. This is this Ashu Solo guy who seems to have so much time on his hands, if not something else on his hands, uh, that he's always moaning on about uh, the presence of Christianity. No one really minds or cares. It's not a major issue. No one is being persecuted. There, there's no inquisition, unfortunately. But he's upset that, that some things say Merry Christmas. Does he have a point? No, well, certainly doesn't have a point. I mean, this guy's got more belief in the court system and in human rights commissions than apparently he does in any faith. Yes. Uh, the idea that this is discriminatory in some way. Canada is a Christian country. At some point, is people it? are... In my mind, it is. I mean, we have a lot of Christian laws. We have a lot of Christian history. We have a lot of past, you know, past historical events that have had to do with Christianity. Mm. And at the end of the day, we celebrate Christmas as a, a traditional uh, cultural event that happens coast to coast in this country. The idea that we're now being discriminatory against other groups and other religions is nonsense. And to me, the idea that, you know, none of these other groups are upset about it tells you all you need to know.
right? There's, there's no Jewish group that's protesting the buses in Saskatchewan. There are no Muslim groups that are protesting the buses in Saskatchewan. It's a guy who is a troublemaker. And the problem I have with this, Michael, is the idea that we have these commissions set up to placate these people, to give in to these people, to allow them a voice, uh, to be heard constantly, to give them that soapbox where they can talk about their issues time and time again, and we're all supposed to sit there and listen. This guy should be ignored. The fact that we have commissions that listen to him is an embarrassment to Canada. Mm. Let's talk about teachers because, uh, you know, we have four children. I mean, my wife and I, not the two of us. I just want to make that in entirely and abundantly clear. Uh, public school teachers, in my experience, I've got to say, outstanding, stellar. Sure. I, I know there are some bad ones, but I don't really encounter them. They are, these are people who will go the extra mile. They really try to help. They care about the kids. Um, I'm sure many of the ones that I come across, their politics are not mine. Their, their sexuality might not be mine, but they're good teachers. That's all I care about. Unions are something different, of course. Now they will be doing the extracurricular work they weren't allegedly doing in the first place. I think many of them were anyway. And the unions, have they won? Have they triumphed over the Liberal government in Ontario? Well, no, not really. I mean, I think that when you look at this leaked memo that came out this week, I think it tells you all you need to know about the union stranglehold on government. They claim in this memo that they defeated Dalton McGuinty. They forced him to resign. Mm. They forced a Liberal convention here in Ontario. They forced the former minister, education minister, Laurel Broughton, uh, to not run for the Liberal leadership. They claim to have all of this power and to be pushing all of this power, and they're telling their membership this, that they are the ones that got all of this done. Well, they it want is, to be reelected, really that's scary. why. But, yeah, but, right, but it's really scary stuff if you think about it. If they actually have as much control as they purport to in these memos, then we should all be afraid, and we should all look really deep as to how much these politicians are pandering uh, to these kind of unions. Well, teachers' unions in particular. Look, I, I, I... Absolutely. There are many unions. If, if you're working on a production line, if you're doing manual labor, you need some sort of representation. I believe in the free market and there and the, 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 the should be a, a, a power confrontation, if you like. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that. But when it comes to teachers, to public service workers, I fully understand a teacher wanting to have good pay for a hard job, and they do get that. But the union leaders need to show them, we're doing the job for you, comrade. They need to show that... You need to vote for us again. That's all. I mean, it's just bravado. It's hyperbole. Okay, but at the end of the day, if you're sending this kind of message out, your job is to do exactly what you said, to mm. get good wages, to have fair working conditions for teachers. No yeah. one's going to begrudge anybody on that. Okay. But, but at the end of the day, you have to think about it and say, do these unions have too much power, especially come election time? Double detention for you. Do they still give double detention? I guess I'll have to take it. I suppose you will. Thank you very much. Thank you.